Oof, Andrew, another massacre day in a market. Officially bear market in QQQ and IWM. Come. IWM has been in uh, bear market uh, in January. Yeah. Q's closed in bear territory, 20% down from their highs. That's insane. So look at the day, look at the daily. I mean, today we opened green, you opened, you traded in the morning. Yeah. Uh, every, everything was good. We talked about Europe, you know, Europe was positive. But then it just started selling off, like all the way down, almost identical to all the indexes. Uh, I talked about it in my Twitter. I said today was a real risk off day. Like we talk a lot about risk off, risk on, but today was one of those days because bond sold off, dollar sold off, equity sold off. When you get correlated sell off all across the board, that's usually. So the risk on and risk off. So the, the different asset class, equities, bond markets. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, commodities. Commodities. So these are different asset class. Yeah. The risk on means that investors put their money in there and they have confidence. Like equity market that is selling up, that doesn't mean that the bond, bond, mar bond market sells up. But today we saw that the all asset class sold off. So it means that nobody has confidence. So everybody wants to go back to cash. Exactly. And uh, that is dangerous. That's 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 dangerous. Yeah. So these these are usually like, there is like different correlations like when equity sells off you expect bond to rally right mm -hmm. people are putting their money back into the safe haven asset 10 years stuff like that today everything sold off so so, they, so the, what does that mean had we had anything like this before back in 2000 in 2020 to 16 that we yeah. had a high grade so yeah yeah, Andrew, yeah you know i talked about it in in the chat room uh one of the things you want to look at is hyg uh the high yield corporate bond Whenever the, the junk bond base, basically, the high yield means junk bond. So companies with like triple B ratings, not, not, not so great ratings. Whenever you see sell off there, that means the spread is widening. That's, that's, that's usually a signal for a lot of money managers that, hey, they gotta take the uh, feet on the, on the stuff, you know, they gotta. <laughs> so the companies that are not solid and they issue bonds, they're high yield because they pay better return because yeah. They're not solid, they're not treasury bills. Yeah, exactly. And nobody wants to be in there. No. It means that the growth outlook is really, really bad. Yeah, I mean, check out the HYG. This is our trading terminal. Like, look at look at the sell-off in HYG. And you know, I mean, if you want to compare this type of sell-off, just go ahead and look at HYG from quite a while ago. This, this is 2008. So right we had here. a nightmare in 2008. So we're, that was the financial crisis. We're getting there. Soon. We had another one in 2016, Adi. That was the time that uh, the rate, that was a rate increase. Yeah. Uh, I think this was Trump taking, taking office and, and the first, first kind of cycle of rate hikes. So that was the first cycle. Yeah. So we had a, some serious, uh, dude, that's a monthly chart. This is the monthly chart. So that chart. means that we had some serious setting up, but on the monthly chart, uh, it bounced back and eventually went up uh, significantly. And again, we had another one in 2019. What was that one for 2019? I think this is the this is the crash of the COVID, That's and then this one 2018. This was another rate hike cycle. There was another 20, one rate 2016 hike, yeah. and 2018, both rate 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 hike cycle. So this is basically this signals liquidity, Andrew. Whenever there's a liquidity crunch in the market, where corporations are like, "Hey, wait a minute! In this environment, we can't raise money." These things are going to be hard. Uh, this, this, this is when the spreads start widening because nobody want to lend. Banks don't want to lend. Um, you're an investor. You don't want to lend. I mean, we have a fund, right? Yeah, no, it's uh, people reached out to us recently yeah. and we said no because there is no liquidity right now that uh, nobody wants to spare. Exactly. We get pitched all the time, so it's crazy. But it's interesting because a few weeks ago, the 13F filings came out. And 13F filings, for those who don't know, if you're a fund manager managing more than $100 million, you have to, every quarter, you have to file out your positions, what stocks you're holding, whether you're in cash or not. And Michael Berry, the big short investor. Dr. Michael Berry, yeah. Dr. Michael Berry, who's been on and off Twitter all the time, coming in, coming off. His he, Twitter is at Cassandra, I think, at yeah? At Cassandra, yeah, yes. I think so, yeah. So Dr. Michael Berry was the first person who defined the credit default swap, which is essentially shorting the housing market yeah. by inventing something called credit default swap. There was nothing something that before to short. And he started paying the premiums until 
the mortgage bonds fa you know failed yeah. and then his the, his default swap become became valuable the, the, the swaps were common for like corporate bonds but there were no credit default swap for mortgage bonds mm -hmm. because they were so secure they were backed by the government or a quasi agency so he actually created credit default swap for mortgage bonds i remember that scene in big short that he went to morgan and stanley and the guy said, yeah, we sell you as much as credit default swap that you want yeah, for mortgage bonds. They, they, thought they, they made fun of him. Uh, well, this is interesting, Andrew, because I looked, I looked through his 13 filings. As you know, I spent a lot of time looking through these numbers. And I, I think I found the gem. He managed about 700 million, so almost a billion, as you can see over here. Um, but his 13 filing only shows 74 million. And these 13 year filings, if you're holding any swaps, you don't have to actually declare it. You don't have to talk about it. So people are speculating that he has some kind of an equity swap, probably shorting the market. Because as you can see, he sold everything. He sold his CBS, he sold his LMT, uh, pretty much read everywhere. So, Andrew, what so do you Dr. think is Michael cooking? Berry, so all the funds over $100 million, they have to report their earnings with SEC. Yeah. And he has $700 million, but there's only $75 million asset plus cash. Yeah. So where is the other $600 million? There are in some uh, trades that you don't have to report. Maybe the credit default swap. And the usually credit defaults are shorting, you know. Yeah. They're insurance, right? They're insurance, usually exactly. They're insurance. Wow. Yeah. So it could be either equity swap. E equity swap, it could be long. Um, but I don't think he's doing long equity swaps. I think... I think it's short. The so this is for the quarter ending. I think it says it here. So this is for Q4 of 2021. So this is his position as of December 31st, 2021. Well, we already had two months of crash, so he might have uh, he might predicted have, this one. Yeah, he might have already cashed in a lot of uh, a lot of money. So the next yeah. one would be end of uh, for the end of uh, March, probably this is the so, next quarter. Yeah, so thirty first of March, the quarter ends, and he has ninety days to declare it. So you you'll probably get it sometimes in April or May. And it's very interesting because I think uh, the top buys that he had, uh, the BMI is. Uh, is the oil company, huh? Bristol Mayors? Not sure. I don't know. I think so. Anyways, Probably. That's very interesting. So if the, <laughs> Dr. Michael Berry, according to this, if he had credit default swap in December or the last quarter of uh, the year, he was expecting a crash. And we are in a bear market in QQQ and IWM. And that's very interesting. It's interesting. So the, the big question is, are we heading into a big short style sell-off? Or no, we're going to find the bottom and rally. That's so the, the feds difference. are meeting this week. Yeah. I mean, but there is, a, there is one thing. QQQ and IWM are in the bear territory. Mm -hmm. means that they are below 20% of their uh, highs. Yeah. QQQ in January and IWM was in November. But there is a positive inflow of money in them. Yeah. You know, there's, there is something called the money flow index that uh, for many months from ARC, for example, there was an outflow. Yeah. You know, this is a volume and price. You can do these calculations. People were taking their money out of the fund. For IWM and QQQ, what we saw last week, there's actually inflow of capital going into these two funds. Maybe that's the bottom that people are start buying, you know, low price, good companies or you know, potential opportunities. It could be. It's 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 tough to call a bottom when there is a geopolitical. Um, yeah, so the China lockdown. So we have a couple of big geopolitical situations that can absolutely take us to another very serious sell-off. The China lockdown, the Zhuangzhou province, Shanghai is in there. I have a friend in Shanghai. He actually messaged me last before he hits the news that, yeah, they're shutting down everything. He sent me the videos and stuff. And uh, yeah, Shanghai, is the largest city, is in lockdown. The schools are closed. Wow. And today, Apple sold up because of the exposure to app uh, to China, China, and also some of their facility production facility uh, stopped working because of uh, that. And then we have the Russia and Ukraine. There are peace talks going, but we don't know exactly what's happening in no, the peace no, no. talks. Uh, and it's been two weeks that are going on. So there, we have some good, and we have the hike rates. Uh, you know, the, the, the sorry, interest rate yeah. hikes that uh, this week the Feds are meeting. So it's gonna be interesting. I mean, with this type of sell-off, 
in the corporate bond market it'll be it'll be really interesting to see how fed's going to kind of tighten there's going to be some liquidity crunch we should do a live on the fed meeting at essentially i think yeah. they start meeting to us tuesday and they release the statement on wednesday so we know what's going to happen yeah. i mean traditionally what we saw that's during the you know interest rate hike the stocks are going up um but this is just a very unusual situation we have another wave of lockdown and we have a war in europe so we're gonna see how it goes it'll be crazy yeah well, we got Norm and Mike coming to our office, so lots of good stuff happening. Yeah, Norm and Mike, we, we might have uh, you know some discussions all together with Ryan, and uh, we'll see how it goes. The volatility is amazing for day trading. Obviously, for investors and long-term holds are a little bit uh, panicky, but uh, it's interesting. This is my second bear market that I'm experiencing, you know, to some extent. Like the biggest one was 2020, which was really fun to trade. It was a fast uh, bear market. Fast bear market yeah. and a V-shaped recovery. V -shaped. The bear markets. In the past, traditionally, it takes about, I've read somewhere, 250 days. So if you're entering a bear market, uh, so maybe we are 30 days into that, so we might have a you know, few more months, uh, six more months of bear market to see how it goes. Uh, but overall, it's a good time to be a trader, but managing risk is very important. <clears throat> and uh, Chinese stocks like Baba and JD, they got destroyed, but they couldn't hold the rally and they just continue went down. That's crazy. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. We'll yeah. see how it goes. Yeah, we'll be here making more content for you guys. Hopefully this helps your trading. I mean, with this type of content, when we do like really deep dive, I, I, uh, sometimes people ask me, hey, but I'm a day trader. Why would that impact me? Well, because you know, if the market is like this, you should be a short bias trader. So these, these type of macro analysis and stuff that we do usually can also help you intraday as well. So that's There's a lot of information in this, in, in this, at least for me, obviously the, for our fund as well. But uh, overall, uh, I, the more you know about the markets, overall it's better for you, even if you're a scalper. Uh, but let's see how it goes. And if you have any questions, guys, leave it in the comments for us and uh, we try to make this better and better for you. Yeah, yeah. See you next one. See you. Thank you so much.